I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today we're talking battery chargers. This is the ISDT SC620, and since I got it almost exactly a year ago, it has become my favorite battery charger, bar none. In fact, I would argue that this is the best value for money battery charger you could buy today. But there's a problem. They've discontinued it. But the good news is they've discontinued it because they're coming out with a second generation of battery chargers that are even freaking better. Stay tuned. Here's what I think is so great about ISDT. For the longest time, it seemed like practically every charger that somebody came out with was just another variant on the same old four button design. You know what I mean when I say four button design? Like this guy here is the AccuCell 6. And this is actually my first charger that I bought when I was getting into the hobby. No kidding, I still have it. Oh. But you recognize this, right? It's got this screen with the same menu that you you know what I'm talking about. The up, the down, the start, the function, right? And Turnigy uses it, Reactor, uh, there, you, could, you could name a million of them. And nobody was really innovating. Now, those of you who own iChargers from Progressive RC are going, nobody was innovating? Damn you, damn you, we were all innovating. Yes, yes, that's great. Progressive RC is fantastic. The iCharger is a fantastic charger. Credit where credit is due. But why don't we all own iChargers? Because they're freaking expensive. And I get that. And frankly, the four button design is not that freaking good. I mean, it gets the job done, but start, 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 start. You know, oh, so clunky. And then ISDT comes out with this guy and it is amazing. The interface is beautiful and a real screen, a nice jog wheel with the menus, just wonderful. And it can be powered from a LiPo XT60 connection so you could easily power it in the field. It has a USB port for charging your phone. It has a nice little single row slot here instead of a bunch of different balance plugs you have to plug in. Just so many thoughtful things. You know, it reminds me of what's going on with Fat Shark goggles right now. Fat Shark goggles are great, but so many people are like, why aren't you innovating more? There are all these things you could be doing. Why aren't you doing them, Fat Shark? And nobody has come along yet and really busted that and been like, screw you. People have tried, but they just haven't got there, I think, in my opinion. But ISDT did that in the world of chargers. When this guy came out, ugh, beautiful. And it's all original, so I don't have to feel guilty that I'm using some ripped off stolen firmware. Please, if they actually did rip it off from someone, just don't tell me. I don't need to know. <laughs> this is the ISDT Q6, and this is their new mini charger. Uh, I say mini, and frankly, when I first saw it, I mean, I'd seen pictures of it on the internet, but I had no idea just how small it really is. This is really easy to toss in your backpack and your flight bag and take to the field and to use it for field charging. And it is actually, you can see, designed for that because it takes power via an XT60. So you can do like I'm doing here. This is an old laptop power supply that I just cut the plug off of and installed an XT60. Uh, and I use that to charge. Uh, or you can have a big old like 5S 10,000 milliamp hour LiPo that you take to the field with you and you can top off your batteries in the field using that. Just plug the battery in, it powers right up and it charges off of it. Now in order to uh, demonstrate this, I'm going to need to plug a battery in. So let me do that right now. And by the way, I'm plugging the battery in here on the balance connector. And if we zoom in here, you see how this balance connector has a single row of pins. In my, in my video about the ISDT battery checkers, I said that ISDT had a custom mold, uh, and that's why you didn't see other people with that. And people made fun of me for that. They were like, oh, my battery checker has had a single row of pins for years now. I guess I went back in time. Ha ha, you guys are very funny. Look at this, though. Do you see that this has these individual slots here so that when you plug in, the keyed slots here can fit in here. Anybody can make a, ba a balance plug that just is filed off, but then you can plug it in the wrong way around and blow something up. The nice thing, the, I, the thing that ISDT has that I was saying is proprietary is not the single row of pins, which obviously many people have. It's this, it's this custom plastic mold here for the, that'll let you plug in the keyed one and still have it be keyed. Okay, so stop making fun of me. Okay, so we'll go ahead and plug this in like so and like so 
and then you can see immediately that it shows the cell voltage fine uh, you could use it as a battery checker in a pinch um, if I press the jog dial I can then go up and I can pick the task now the task can either be charge discharge or storage some of you may have noticed that the fast charge program is missing, and it's actually not missing. It's just a part of the charge program. So whereas other chargers would let you pick between the charge cycle and the fast charge cycle, ISDT just says, look, when you charge, first I'm going to fast charge, and then I'm going to give you an alarm, and I'm going to say, hey, if you want to go, you can go now. And if you don't take the battery off the charger, then I'm going to finish the cycle with the balance program. The other nice thing is that if I choose charge, for example, and then you can see the battery type is LiPo. It supports high volt, LiPo, ion, LIFE, lead, and nickel, all the standard types. If I then go to the cell voltage, I can actually pick a higher or lower cell voltage, all the way up to 4.25, all the way down to 4.15. And you can do this on not just the charge program, but also the discharge program. So you could say discharge, but not to 3.3, .3, discharge to, I don't know, 3.4. And the storage program. With storage, you can choose all the way down to 3.7 and all the way up to 3.9. And this is really cool because many times, well, not, not like many times, but enough that I notice I'll want to like do a storage program, but I don't want to go to 3.8, like I want to go to 3.9. Maybe I have uh, some batteries that I did a couple flights on, but they're not fully discharged, and I just want to get them all to 3.9 so I can then put them on a parallel board and charge them the rest of the way up. And the inability to stop, the, what I would have to do is just kind of watch them and be like, is it at 3.9 yet? No, no, no. Oh, there it is. Stop. With this one, I can just set it to 3.9 or whatever it is I want to get to and it'll stop when it's done. That's pretty cool. I can choose my charging current here, and the charging current on this goes all the way up to 14 amps. And that actually brings us to an important point that we need to discuss. So this charger is rated at 300 watts or 14 amps, and the way charger uh, specifications work is whichever one of those you hit first will be the limitation. So let's say we take 300 watts and we divide by the voltage of an almost fully charged four cell battery, let's say 16 volts. I'm saying almost fully charged because as you get to the end of the charge cycle, you're gonna taper off. So you're probably realistically not gonna ever be shoving 300 watts into a battery at 16.8 volts. But let's just say 16 volts. 300 watts divided by 16 volts equals 18.75 amps. And what that means is that if you were pushing 300 watts into a four cell battery that was almost at the end of its cycle, you would exceed the amp rating of the charger. It can only be 14 amps. So we could also flip that around and say 14 amps times 16 volts equals 224 watts. And what we're getting at here is that because the amp rating is only 14 amps, if you're charging four cell batteries, as most of us are, you're not actually ever going to get 300 watts out of this charger. You're going to be getting closer to 225 or 250 watts. That's the limitation you have to deal with. The 14 amp rating is actually really easy for you to think about. Let's say you've got a 1300 uh, milliamp hour battery and you're charging at a 1C charge rate. If it's 1300 milliamp hours, that's 1.3 amp hours, and that means that a 1C charge rate is 1.3 amps. The math is really simple. 1.3 amps times 10 packs is 13 amps, so this 14 amp charger will be able to charge approximately 10 1300 milliamp hour batteries at once. Or at a 2C charge rate, if you like to live dangerously, it can charge approximately five of them at once. You can work that math around any way you want to try and figure out how fast and you can charge your batteries and how many batteries you can charge at a time. Big old fan on this one. And the reason is that this is a 1000 watt charger. Or if you prefer to go based on amps, it is 35 amps. That's insane. I just, I don't, this is a bigger charger than most of us are ever going to freaking need. This is the ISD T8, and it goes all, about T8, it goes up to eight cell, whereas the, the, the Q6 only goes up to six cells. 
One thing that's different about it is it does not have the jog dial like all the other ones did. Even the uh, even the SC620 had a jog dial. This one doesn't. It's got a button. Okay, so fine. It's got a button. Let's plug in. Uh, let's plug in the battery here and plug in the. Ah, there we go. Got a battery plugged in, so we get some data here. And we got everything is pretty much the same as you saw on the Q6. So we can choose different voltages. We can do the same programs, the same battery types. The menu is slightly different, but things are basically the same. However, notice that the current goes all the way up to 30, 30. The website said 35. Okay, fine. I am frankly astounded that a 1000 watt 30 amp charger can be this small. I just can't even imagine. But I have, I've done uh, some test chargers on this at 20 amps and that fan starts blowing like a hurricane but it just keeps going. And frankly, I would be more suspicious of this if I hadn't owned the SC620 for about a year now and it has just kept cranking. I have banged it around in my flight bag. I have banged it around in checked luggage. At one point, a screw came loose somewhere on the inside and rattled around in there for a while and I kind of cracked open the thing and knocked the screw out and the screw never, it's still missing, <laughs> but it's just kept working. So this is a heck of a charger and I, ex I expect it to be pretty solid. Uh, I hope that, that turns out to be true. There's something else about these chargers that makes them really great. I'll bet it's something that you actually, most of you don't know about and that is the balancing current on them is really surprisingly high. What's balancing current? Well, you know what balancing is. Balancing means that you're taking all the cells, the individual cells of the pack, and you're making sure they're at the same voltage. The way you probably think that balancing works is that the charger just stops charging the cell when it's full and continues to charge the other cells, but that's actually not how balancing works. The way balancing works is that when one of the cells gets full, the charger begins to pull current out of that cell via the balance lead and continues to push current into the cell or into the pack via the main discharge lead. So basically it's taking out the same amount that's going in and keeping the cell at whatever the voltage, the 4.2 volts that it needs to be until all the others come up. And here's why that's important because most chargers have a have a limit on the balancing current of maybe 250 milliamps uh, to 500 milliamps is typical. And what that means is that when you get to the end of the cycle, the balancing program can be much slower than the charge program. And that is especially true if you have a uh, if you have a big parallel array with like 10 or 15 batteries on it that needs to be balanced. You try and balance a parallel array with a total of 15,000 milliamp hours on it at, at 250 milliamps, it's going to take for freaking ever. Uh, these guys have a balance current. The Q6 has a balance current of one amp, which is really respectable. As I said, 250, 350 milliamps, maybe 500 milliamps for a good charger is, is more typical. And the T8 has a balancing current of 2.2 amps. And the, the takeaway for that is that your balance program is going to be much faster, maybe almost as fast as the charge program. And you're going to especially notice the difference if you charge big banks of parallel, parallel boards, like you might do with this T8. I mean, that's for me, if you fly 6S helicopters or 10S helicopters, well, 8S helicopters, then maybe you're going to be using this. But for, for mini quad pilots, I think the biggest application is people who are charging great big parallel boards of batteries all daisy chained together. Uh, and that's going to make a big difference there. The last thing to talk about then is the price. The Q6 is 60 bucks, which 60 bucks is about market price for a 300 watt charger. If you go do some comparison shopping, you'll see they come in around that price. And when you consider that this one is so freaking small, it's got the beautiful screen uh, and just, you know, all the features, 60 bucks is a, is a great price for this charger if that's what you're, if you're looking for a 300 watt charger. The SC620, I, I just checked to make sure it was actually still available for purchase and it I mean, it's been discontinued, but it's still in stock places. And as of the, today, you can still buy it. It's normally 66 bucks, so it's actually not that much more than the, the Q6, but remember, it's not getting the, the latest firmware updates. It's a little bit bigger and less portable. 
you know, but for six bucks more, you get 500 watts uh, and 20 amps instead of 300 watts and 14 amps. That's kind of a big deal. Um, it's actually for sale right now for only 55 bucks on Banggood. Of course, there's a product link in the video description for all of these. The T8. Now, the T8, what would you, 1,000 watts, 30 amps, go do some price comparisons and come back. And then when I tell you it's 100 bucks, you won't get sticker shock. 100 bucks is, I mean, that's a lot of money to pay. But it, for, for what you're getting, again, it's just really a no-brainer. So there you go. New chargers from ISDT, Q6 and the T8, and the old standby, my favorite for a year, the SC620. Product links down in the video description, as always. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.